Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and life coach Cindy Chavez here. It is Thursday, December the 7th, 2017. And welcome to your daily dose of happy. And uh, we've had quite an eventful week here, Cindy, particularly technologically. I think we have actually ironed out the static sound. Hopefully that's gone forever. <laughs> yes. Yay. Good for that. That would be a good, good thing. So uh, it's Thursday. Um, it's, we're, we're past what they call the hump day for those who are uh, feeling chained to their desks and so forth. So I, uh, I guess from that perspective, that's a good thing. But how about some other things, like any wins going on in your life, any good things going on? I mean, the, the, the big one here, obviously, is we got rid of the static, but any other – any wins in your life? <laughs> it's funny. When you said it's Thursday, <clears throat> the first thing I thought of is um, around here, we call Thursday Friday Eve. <laughs> I love so, that. <laughs> <laughs> when you said it, we all, you know, it's it's funny. We'll like suddenly remember it's Thursday on a Thursday morning and and say, "Hey, it's Friday Eve! Happy Friday Eve! Yay!" We high five. So when you said that, I was like, "Oh, there's the win! It's Friday Eve!" <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. That's a good idea. I'd never heard of that. Friday Eve. <laughs> Does that uh, mean that Friday is is weekend Eve? Yeah, you know, it's like getting closer and closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can do a, a happy Friday Eve and a happy weekend Eve on Fridays. Okay, I like that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Much better than hump day, I think. I never really liked that phrase. <laughs> so, okay, that's a good win. Much better. I'm trying to think. What else uh, has, has been a win in my life? I mean, yesterday it was a lot of the usual stuff except for doing two fun shows. I really enjoy doing the shows every day. So those are my biggest wins. You know what my win today is going to be? I'm going to look forward. My win today is I haven't been out doing my walks the last few days because I've been dealing with so many of these tech issues. I'm going to get out and get my walk in today. I can hardly wait. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, I, you know, usually uh, on Thursdays I have a certain um, routine, and I go work in a different office from my office just to kind of break up the uh the routine and get my brain you know thinking in a different way and it's a it's a different space and i usually spend time writing there and today i decided that i'm not going to do that because it's raining and it's very very cold oh <laughs> so that's part of my win was you know what i'm not going to go outside today so you are going to go outside today you're going to stay in where it's nice and toasty uh, exactly. That feels better to me. And Absolutely. so, you know, it's that whole, if you can do the thing that feels a little better, then that's your answer is to do it, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Doing that thing that's a little bit better is, is how I learned to believe that I could actually shift my mood. Did I tell you that? Did I tell you that yes. I, for the longest time I couldn't, I, I really didn't believe you could actually shift your mood. You were completely dependent upon the events that happen in your life as to how you're right. going to feel. Yeah, that, right. that that whole thing about t taking little tiny shifts. Even the first time I tried it, I said, how the heck do you do this? <laughs> it it's really interesting when, when you think about the energy levels, and we talked a little bit about that yesterday, but at that lowest level where you're feeling, you know, depressed or unmotivated even, um, kind of lackadaisical, but those lower levels of energy – they're very hard sometimes to, when you know how to shift out, it's easier, but it's very hard to see out of them. Mm -hmm. Like someone that is there and living in that space, especially if it's an extended amount of time, a long depression or, you know, things just don't seem to be going well and, and it gets harder and harder to sort of see that you can get out. Yes. Or see the positive things. You know, it, it's... It's in that space where you look around and just things just don't look good, and it's very hard to see. And someone else who is at a higher level of energy up the scale, I'm talking about emotional energy, it may be easier for them to see. And they could, you know, and that doesn't ever, sometimes that doesn't feel good either. <laughs> to yeah. Someone say, oh, but look at all this good stuff, and you just can't see it. And so that's the answer, I think, is learning how to shift out shift up you know a little bit at a time mm. yeah it's, right that we were talking about that right before the call the emotional right. scale you know the the shift from i'm looking at the emotional guidance scale the abraham hicks emotional scale right now so 
So the very top is joy and the very bottom is fear, grief, depression, despair, powerlessness. 20 steps in between. So to, to ask someone or ask yourself to go from depression to joy in one leap, it's just too big. Well, when you don't even think that you can shift on the scale at all, that you're completely at the whims of, the, of fate, it, those 20 steps can seem like 20 miles. <laughs> Each right. step can seem like a right. long trip. You know, like, how do I get one step up? <laughs> it just yeah, seems impossible no, at first. True. Yeah. So it was when I first discovered you could actually do it with a lot of help from my wife um, that it, it opened up windows and doors for me it, it opened up a, no, a whole new vista like wow i actually influence my own my own feeling my own what, what i'm experiencing even in in the face of stuff going on that i don't like i can still control my own feeling wow can i do that all the time <laughs> it's really empowering it is it's empowering it's it's still daunting because you know you're, you're still new at it you, you you did it once right or maybe you did it twice and you're wondering can i do it every time that's the way I was anyway. But uh, if you stick at it, I found that sticking at it over time, it's, 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 almost, like you're, it's, it's almost like you're dealing with the Tin Man from, from The Wizard of Oz, and all <laughs> of his joints are rusted solid. And, and you just work an oil can into one of the joints, and slowly it starts to come unstuck. <laughs> and finally you get a little range of motion, and then you want to do it with the other, so you're working it with the oil can. <laughs> That's what I it felt like. I love this analogy. <laughs> Because that's it's, what you it's feel like. Perfect. Yeah. And then pretty soon, things start to move easier, and then pretty soon it's more automatic. Mm -hmm. That, yep. I think, is a, a worthy goal, you know, to work towards that place where those shifts become easier and easier until that's when we catch ourselves and we're down at that lower end of the scale, you know, where we're feeling depression or we feel guilty or we feel you know upset and we're able to say oh wait a minute this isn't the feeling that i want to have what would i rather have even the part That's about where it becoming, we want to get <laughs> yeah right oh yeah and even the part about it becoming automatic even that took a while i mean i had to do a lot of joint oiling <laughs> before it became automatic like like weeks of it before i, I finally start to saw start to saw yeah <laughs> started to see my own shifts happening without putting in huge amounts of effort and when that happened i thought when that happened it was going to be this huge joyous thing it was actually just plain relief which kind of makes sense when you think about it but i, I thought it was going to be some huge like breakthrough oh wow i'm doing it all the time no for me it was just oh thank goodness i didn't think i was ever going to get out of there <laughs> You know, it, I love that you said the word relief because I had been right before the call when I was looking at this scale, um, and the word relief is not on the scale, and we were talking about peace. Right, the word right. peace is not on the scale either. And so I was looking at the scale. I was like, where is peace? And relief is one of the – it's one of my favorite things as a coach to hear a client say. Mm. Um, it, it's often, to me, an indicator that, we're going in the right direction. Oh yeah. When oh, we yeah. when we're trying to make a decision and we make a decision and we feel relief. To me, that's a big indicator that yep, that was it. And when I'm coaching someone and they I mean, sometimes you can hear someone just take that breath just mm. oh, it's like a weight's lifted off. And I think that that's a wonderful thing to feel. It's, it is. It's a wonderful thing to feel. It, it's also kind of funny because the first few times I felt it during this process of learning how to, uh, you know, apply my own uh, wishes, if you will, to what I'm feeling and what I'm how I'm experiencing life. As I, as I was applying it, I didn't really understand the idea of resistance, and I didn't really understand the idea. Of relief until I experienced relief for a few times. And one time I combined the two ideas together. I said, Oh, oh, relief is where you're getting rid of the resistance. That's the resistance they're talking about. And it was mm. the first time that I recognized what resistance really was. Because Abraham talks about that all the time. You know, you listen to the Abraham Hicks workshops, and that, that word is used probably 50 times in a workshop. But every time they use it, I said, 
yeah, but what am I resisting? I don't understand. <laughs> it wasn't until I actually had the experience of relief that I understood the resistance they were talking about was the resistance to feeling better. Just, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to hold myself in a space that doesn't allow me to feel better because that's what I'm used to. And once mm. I understood it that way, then it made more sense to me. Yeah. I heard one time, I think I heard Esther Hicks say something like, you don't need more you know, whatever. You just need less resistance. Yes, right. Yes. Right? And so, again, you know, resistance is, resistance shows up in two different ways. It it shows up as attachment, but it also shows up as aversion. And the aversion one is the one that people often feel like resistance is they're saying no to something, like mm. I'm pushing it away, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. when they want something, right? They want a particular thing and they know they know enough about law of attraction to know, well, if I don't have it, then I must be resisting it. And so they think that it's pushing it away or saying no to it, you know, with, with their energy, saying no. Mm-hmm. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's saying yes, right, because we get too attached to a certain outcome. Sure. And we want it so much and we have to have it this way. So it's either yes, yes, or it's no, no, don't, I don't want that to happen. We have to get to that place where we can let go of attachment and aversion and that's the place of relief and feeling better when we say, okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I mean, before we start doing uh, the podcast and we decided that we were going to be talking about peace, um, one of the things that you mentioned is that you, you run into this a lot with your clients when you're coaching your clients. And I was wondering, which form do you get most of? Is it more the aversion type or is it more the attachment type? I think it's more attachment. And I say that because, and you know, I might rethink it later and think, hmm, but off the top of my head I would say attachment because generally for support or reach out for any, to any, whoever they're reaching out to for support, um, a lot of times it's because they want a certain thing, especially with coaching. Um, when people ask the difference between, say, coaching and therapy, I usually give the the standard simple answer is that <coughs> therapists are often taking someone from dysfunctional to functional mm-hmm. and dealing with a lot of things that are happening in the past. Coaches are often bringing someone from functional to optimal. Oh. And so in that space, you know, this is someone that's functional and they're hiring a coach because they want to create something, you know, newer, bigger, better, whatever in their life. And so they have a goal that they want to see realized, and there, sometimes we all do this. Sometimes we have a thing we want, and we get really attached to it. And we try for it, and for whatever reason, it's not forthcoming, and we're like, I need to get some help with this, right? So people will come to me as a coach and say, this is what I really want, and it's just not happening, and how can you help me get there? And so a lot of times there's this attachment, to a certain outcome, and and that's just resistance. So we we work through letting go of that resistance the same way we would work through, you know, if it was an aversion to something, uh, which, you know, you get that too. Someone shows up and there's something going on in their life that they're having a hard time accepting. They don't want this anymore, and they're, they, they don't want it, and they're afraid it's going to happen, whatever it is, or, you know, how can we avoid this kind of thing. And there's a lot of resistance that shows up as, you know, certain emotions that show up. And there's definitely no peace and no relief in either one of those situations. So if we were trying to look at this whole question of bringing peace to yourself and looking specifically at the cases where uh, th- there's an attachment going on, an attachment issue, like what would be an example that comes to your mind of, of, of a particular kind of story, if you will, that, that, that demonstrates the desire for peace and the, how the attachment is getting in the way? Well, I I think it could be anything, but let's just say I'm a relationship coach. So oftentimes I get someone that will come to me because they're wanting to have a relationship. Okay. And they feel like they're just not finding one. And anything that you want, 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 or don't want, don't want, will cause not just resistance, but because of I think of the resistance, a feeling of a lack of peace 
And, you know, you were saying earlier that it was a real, you know, epiphany for you to realize that, oh, my goodness, I like I can I can have an effect on my emotions because you said up until then, I really felt like it was just fate. It was up to whatever was happening to right. me. Right. Right. Yeah. And so that's the same exact thing here is that recognizing because people feel like if I just had a relationship, I'd be happy. It's and we can common. fill in that relationship blank with all kinds of things. If I just made more money, I'd be happy. If yeah, I lived right. in a different place, <laughs> I'd be happy. If I had a different job, I'd be happy. You know, if if somebody in my life would treat me in a different way, I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. And we can we can you know take the word happy out and then put peaceful in there, right? Well, I just I won't have any peace until. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I think it's the recognition that you had about oh wait a minute like. I don't have to live, you know, my emotional life doesn't have to be at the whim of, like, whatever's going on. And it's the, the peace. I mean, we all know we live in a world where if we want to focus on things that aren't peaceful, there's plenty of it. Oh, yes. You know, we talked the other day, you and I were talking about uh, the news, right? And which, which we're trying having, to stay away from, but still. <laughs> having the news on, right. And it's like... If we, whatever we focus on expands. So if we want to focus on, you know, terrible things going on in the world, boy, there's plenty of them we can find. Oh, yes. And yet, if we want to find peace, that peace, and when we look outward and we focus on all of that, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of peaceful. But the peace is within. That's right. Yeah. In the same way that you're recognized, that you recognized at some point that, all of those emotions, they were in you. They weren't, they weren't just at the whim of things coming at you. And so the peace comes from that inner knowing that somehow everything's going to be okay. You know, when I was, when I was not yet a coach, like 10 years ago I was going through a really, really hard time in my life, and I had a coach, and I was at that bottom level of energy victim energy where nothing's going right for me everything is terrible right now you know it's that place where people say this sucks and it's just never going to get any better and i don't know what i'm going to do but this is awful and i was you know we call it down in the dumps Mm -hmm. and i was there and my coach said to me um what could I say? She asked me such a powerful question, and it seems so simple on the surface, but she said, what can I say to you that would make you feel better? I think she realized she, did, she didn't know what to say. Mm. I mean, that was the bottom line. She didn't know what to say to me, and I was, you know, mulling around in the depths of despair, and she finally she said, what could I say to you right now? And I said, you know, that would, that would make things better. I said, I guess I just need somebody to tell me that everything's going to be okay. Mm, and yes. She said, and she said, Cindy, everything's going to be okay. And, you know, that was probably 10 years ago, and I still think it was one of the most powerful moments um, that I've had in a coaching session. And it seems so simple. But the reminder, the knowing inside that, you know what, everything is going to be okay. Um, is really important. We have to remind ourselves that, that everything's going to be okay. We've been through things before, (laughs) right? Right. We've been through tough times before, and we're okay. And it's like if you're listening to this right now, you know, not only are you okay in this moment right now, but you're going to be okay. Things are going to be okay. And I think it's that. It's remembering that, that the peace is inside. It's funny you should mention that, and it's funny also that when I asked you for an example, you picked one from the realm of relationships. And the reason I say it's funny is that this whole idea of wanting to know it's going to be okay was exactly what I was asking for around the time leading up to when I met my wife. And actually, it's the times afterward, too. And the thing that I notice as I'm hearing your story is I actually remember asking people who I'd been in a, in a rather deep conversation with, 
not directly, but indirectly, I, I, I was, I would say things like, I just wish somebody would tell me it was going to be okay. And no one ever did. No one ever did. They all tried to, to stay in the realistic realm, right? You know, well, I can't tell you it's, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> mm, yeah. And it, it, it occurs to me, all I needed really was to have one person say it was going to be okay. And I probably would have shifted my mood right there. Now, would I have kept it? I don't know, but at least it would have been a shift. You know, it's good to hear you say that because when I tell this story, you know, I've told this story before and I always think like, is, is this so simple? Like that telling the story that people will hear it and say, well, that, you know, <laughs> you, you, you told her what to say and she said it back to you and, <laughs> and how, so how could that be too powerful? But it really was what I needed in the moment. Yeah. And I needed I needed to hear it from someone else, I guess, and hearing her say everything's going to be okay. Uh it just it shifted things for me. I'm not going to say that I jumped, you know, we were talking earlier about that emotional scale mm-hmm. with 22 things. I'm going to read it in a second, but it's like I didn't make the leap from despair and powerlessness up to joy in that moment. No. Nope. But it really did take me quite a few steps up. I I went from I went from where I was to hopefulness, which is number six, with joy being at number one. Mm. And fear, grief, depression, despair, powerless is 22 at the bottom. So mm. that's a lot of steps it from is. that one thing. It's a ton. Um, I think we should, we should go through these just so that people that are listening can know what they are. Okay, before um, you do that, uh, I just, uh, I'm trying to make it a practice to about 20 minutes in, put in a little bit of a plug for the show. So what I want to urge listeners who are enjoying the show to do is if you're enjoying this, uh, go to your favorite social media and tell people you're enjoying this. We want to spread the message of LOA today and we've been experiencing tremendous growth, particularly over the last six months, uh, double digit growth. Um, but we want to keep that trend going. And the way to do that is when like-minded people tell other like-minded people they know that they're enjoying it. So please take the time on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever your favorite social media is, you know, like us and, and tell other people that you like us. And if you're listening uh, to the broadcast live on the LOAToday.net website, there's a little heart there you can click on saying that you like it there. So please give, give, give us the love. <laughs> yes, yes. Show some love to us. That's awesome. Okay. So joy, appreciation, empowerment, freedom, and love, that love that we're asking you to show us. It's it, number one. <laughs> number That's one, all right. <laughs> That's the top. Um, and as we work our way, I'm actually going to start, though, from the bottom. Okay. Um, cool. And here's what's interesting is that everyone understands these bottom levels. <laughs> I mean, we, we live in a world where these energies are very common, right? Fear, oh, yes. grief, depression, despair, powerlessness. I would say that you just described like 80% of the population right there. Right, right. Um, The next step up, insecurity, guilt, unworthiness. Mm Mm-hmm. The next step. It's hard to believe that's actually better when you think about it. (laughs) No, and we're, okay, so keep that in mind. We're actually, as I go up, we're getting better. These levels are getting more um Anabolic. They are moving from the bottom of the scale to the top. So jealousy is actually a little bit higher level of a vibration of energy than insecurity and guilt and unworthiness. Now, we don't want to stay in that place, but the next step up is hatred and rage. You can and kind of see what the pattern is up, there, too. The pattern, the pattern there is that even though you're in the negative realm, you're trying to express it and get it out in some way. Jealousy, yes, rage, exactly. hate, hatred. Exactly. Yeah. And the, ne- the next step is revenge, and the step after that is anger. And I always say this, you know, as we go up, look at these steps. Revenge, then anger, then discouragement, then blame. And so what I always point out to people is down in that victim mode is when you're saying uh, everything sucks. This is terrible. I hate this. Poor me. Yes. (laughs) But the next levels that you get into, the angry levels, they're when you're saying, okay, you know that whole uh, quote from that movie, right? I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. (laughs) That's right. Broadcast (laughs) news from the 1970s. I remember that movie. Yeah. Right? So so those levels, the levels of conflict, are actually when you're starting to want to take some action 
so that you're not down in that place. So they are a higher level. Um, after we get past discouragement and blame, there's worry, doubt, disappointment, overwhelmment, frustration, irritation, and impatience. Those three are all in one level there. Those, those describe where I was at when I was trying to figure out how to control my own mood. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, and and also, you know, little things happen. Look at all the tech all the tech problems that have been happening and that you've been patient with and fixing. And there has to be some frustration and irritation that happens, right? And when we recognize it, we just do our best to shift it. <laughs> Well, actually, you know what I do when, when I'm tr- when I've been trying to solve these tech issues this week. You're right; there is the tendency to feel that disappointment and frustration and so forth. But I was successfully able to remind myself: all I got to do is fix this, and it's going to go away. <laughs> so I was actually yeah, feeling good about it. So that's a successful energy shift right there. Yeah. Just telling yourself that, right? I always tell myself that too. With with tech stuff, is okay. Take a deep breath. There's always a learning curve. You're actually learning something right now in mm-hmm. this process, and then it's going to get fixed, and then you'll know how to do it, right? That's right. Um, boredom, contentment. Now, this is interesting. I want to ask you what you think, how you describe or define the word content. I think I probably would define it differently from most people, so I'm maybe not the best person to ask about that. Well, you know what I'm asking, and we have this discussion here at home, because when I used to hear the word content, I always thought of the picture in my mind was a little kitten that had just finished eating and was curled up in a ball, warm and cozy and full and sleeping and just content. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, heard quite a few other people say that, Content, no, like that's, no, that's down the emotional scale. Like you want to be content. I was putting it up much higher than it falls here, and so I'm always curious. Um, for, it for falls me, between boredom and hopefulness. So, yeah, that, well, that, that's about right. For me, content is what you settle for. Okay, settling, right, right, and that's what I've heard a lot of people say. So, okay, so what's interesting is right after settling, right, right after contentment, um, which I, I say actually can be the beginning of this process. We talked about resistance, right? Contentment, I kind of see it also as acceptance. So when we accept something, we're not saying that we want it. We're not saying that we want to keep it this way. We're really just saying, okay, this is where we're at. It is what it is. And maybe that's kind of in that place of contentment because it gets easier to let go of resistance when we're like all right this is we are we are where we are this is what it is and how do we move forward well for myself when when i got to contentment for the first time um through deliberate um activity not because i was you know thrust there by the fates and the winds of fate and so forth um when i first got there deliberately it was a milestone because I had managed to finally break through to the positive side of the scale. So, Right, because the next step up is hopefulness. Okay, all right, yeah. And when, when you're, right? feeling, and, when you're yeah. feeling like that, it, it becomes, it's almost like a validation of the process for me. The fact that I was yeah. able to get there at all told me there really was hope. I, there was actually a chance I could reach the higher reaches of the scale. And even though I still didn't really know how to get there, which is kind of weird because here I was taking the steps to get there, but in my heart of hearts, I felt like that same person who was asking, you know, please tell me everything's going to be okay. (laughs) Despite the progress I'd made, I was still feeling that. And yet there was also the flip side, which is I had gotten this far. And that's where, like you said, the next step is hopefulness. I was starting to feel hopeful. I was starting to feel like I might be able to get to some of those reaches. And boy, wouldn't that be something. It's interesting looking at this scale because when someone comes to me and they are in a place where they're feeling hopeless, I always feel like my number one goal is to restore their hope. So they're hopeless and I really want to do what I can to bring them 
to a place where they feel like their hope has been restored. But once we're hopeful, we don't want to stay there because that brings us back into that place of, well, I hope this happens, right? We're at the whim of everything. Once once we're hopeful, we need to move up the scale. <laughs> we need to keep going, keep going. Because the next one, our optimism, positive expectation and belief, enthusiasm, eagerness, and happiness. I'm feeling good just hearing those. Just, just, just when you say those, my, my mood is lifting. <laughs> right? Joy, appreciation, empowered, freedom, love. So when we feel, oh, okay, I was so hopeless, and now you've given me hope. I'm, I've had so many people say that to me in the course of a conversation. Oh, you've given me hope. I feel like I have my hope back. I'm like, good, good. Now let's talk about where we go from here, right? Because we want to get into that place where it's not hope that we have anymore, but it's faith. It's belief. It's a knowing that we know we can do this. We know things are going to be okay. We know. And then we start feeling, you know, enthusiastic and eager to, to make this happen, to allow it to happen, to allow the goodness in. And that's taking us so far up that level. So when, when we think about the way this goes, from the bottom to the top, my question was, where is peace on this scale? <laughs> and I think it's at that contentment level, actually. Really? Um, yes, I do. I, now, it might not be the deepest peace, but I think that when we get to that place of relief and peace, that the place we move forward from it is up the scale to feeling hopeful again. To feeling and then optimistic and it's then belief. Interesting that you say that because as I was thinking about where I would put it on the scale, I realized, and this is kind of very similar to what you just said, but just from a slightly different perspective. Um, for me, it isn't that peace is an element on the scale. For me, peace is moving up a step on the scale. It's the, yes. it's the movement that is the peace. Yes, love that. That's it. I, I believe that is it. So something that I think really encompasses, you know, peace, I, something that I think is important is to learn how to express whatever it is that we're feeling. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, being okay with saying, I feel really angry about this, or I feel frustrated with this, I'm having this, you know, <laughs> For me, it would be, maybe not you, Walt, but for me, it would be, oh, I'm dealing with all these tech issues today, and I'm really <laughs> frustrated, right? But it's just being able to acknowledge and say that, say what it is and express it, what it is, that's leading you on the road to peace. I well, also want to reassure you, I, I have helped a lot of people with tech issues in my life because I am good at them, and very often I get... The, the comment that is something along the lines of, I am so glad you're here to fix this for me or to, to show me how this works or whatever, because I could never do this myself. This, I just, I, I just can't handle technology. And what I want to tell them, sometimes I actually do tell them, what I want to tell them is I feel the same way. The only difference is I just never allowed it to get in the way. <laughs> I just did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I think that's important, recognizing that all of those emotions and feelings that are on that emotional scale like we went through the the 20 ways to hack your happiness and this was part of that as well is that it's all part of the human condition um, we don't want to get stuck where we're feeling that lower end of the scale all the time right but even people that are living at the top of the scale we still experience contrast yes we still have the capability you know we're we're, we have the ability to be disappointed or to worry about something or to feel discouraged when things don't happen the way we think they should. And, <clears throat> and it's okay. It Contest is okay. Contrast actually, you know, we, I don't think we'd appreciate that higher end of the scale if we didn't have the lower end of the scale. I think, too, it's also important to recognize that this emotional set point scale, which is intended to describe our our current emotional set point where where do, where are we currently sitting on the scale 
and we tend to think of that as being somewhat fixed, somewhat you know, somewhat solid and steady. But I think it's important to remember it actually never is. I mean, Mm-mm. we could think of it as maybe an average that you know, on average, I'm at that particular point for this day. But throughout the day, we're going up and down that scale all over the place. And Agreed. what we're what we're really trying to get to the point of is where most of the time we're spending in the upper end of the scale, averaging you know somewhere high up on on that end of the scale. But even somebody who's at that high end of the scale, it's not like they're there all the time. They're bouncing around, and every time you go down, you find a way to get back up by recentering and focusing on the good things, focusing on the things that make you feel joy. Right, and I think that that's that's a key to remember is that. Emotions, I always think of the word emotion as the E is energy in motion. Oh, yes. Emotions are, it, they move. Our feelings and emotions move and they require movement. Yeah, that's a good point. That's very and good. And so we have to recognize that if we want to be able to be uh, the mover, right? Yeah. <laughs> we want to be conscious about moving them and moving them up the scale. Mm-hmm. So finding things to be grateful for, even in those situations. It's also interesting what you said earlier about how, uh, particularly when we're feeling the, the lower end of the scale, the negative emotions, how important it is to express them. And when you said that, I agreed with it, but I also said to myself, wow, we really do miss the other side of it. Because so many of us, when we get to the higher end of the scale, we forget to express it. We say, okay, I'm feeling the joy, I'm feeling the (laughs) happiness, but we don't go, yeah! We don't jump (laughs) up and down like the little kid who can hardly wait to go to Disneyland. (laughs) Right, right. I I remember one time talking to somebody that was called me because they were really excited about the possibility of, of something uh, really good that was getting ready to happen, and they were waiting on word to see if this thing was going to happen. And I said to them, well, what would you do? What would you do if you found out? Yes, right now, if you found out this thing was going to happen, this thing that you've been working towards, it's going to happen, what would you do? Well, what do you mean? Well, how would you express it? How would you feel? Oh, I'd be so happy. Well, how would you express it? Well, I don't know. I said, well, <laughs> think of a way. What would you do? Just, if you know, if you could do anything right now, she said, oh, I'd... I'd hug my child and run through the house and I would go jump on the bed and shout for joy. I said, okay, go do that thing. <laughs> Which feels weird the first time you try to do that. Let's be perfectly and, well, honest. Well, the funny thing is is that <laughs> they did go and do that thing and then they got the phone call with the yes. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. Okay. So did they do it again? I think so. Oh, good. Okay. Because <laughs> now you got two opportunities. You do it because you're trying to attract it, and then when it happens, you get to celebrate it. That's good. <laughs> but you're, you're right. It's like, well, how do we express these things? And especially if we're out of practice. I find it's funny. I, I've mentioned this a few times uh, on the show. I think I've done it with you, and I know I've done it with the other co-hosts, about how when I take my walk, I listen to music on my iPhone. And... Partway through the walk, usually about 20 to 25 minutes in, because I'm, all the songs I'm listening to are very positive, very upbeat, you know, very positive lyrics and so forth. Um, about 20 minutes in, I got the smile on my face, and I don't even know I have it there. <laughs> but I find out about it because other people react better to me. You know, I get these big high waves and all this kind of stuff, and that's when the smile hits my face in a big way because now it's more conscious, like, oh, they're reacting to my face. I like that. And so I have to do a little <laughs> celebration, you know. But it's amazing how we can be totally unaware of what's going on on, on our own faces. It's like, um, I can't remember what movie it was, but there was a movie where uh, there was a, a child and an adult having a conversation and the child says something to the effect, why is it that you're not happy, that you're never happy. And the adult says something like, well, I am happy. And the child says, well, why don't you let your face know it? <laughs> I always thought that I had a, a, a real poker face, you know. I thought, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't show, you know, everything I'm feeling on my face. And apparently people that love me have told me, Cindy, that is just not true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember one of my friends said, oh, yeah, when that happened, oh, I saw the look on your face. I was like, what? I made a look on my face? <laughs> 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 said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're right about that. I thought you were going to say that about 20 minutes into your walk, that without even realizing it, you just 
were singing at the top of your lungs. That's what I Well, I've actually had that one, too. I had that one just earlier. Was it earlier this week? No, it was last week. Toward the end of last <laughs> week, I was, I was on a walk, and all of a sudden, about halfway through the walk, I felt this welling up in my torso. Of, of happiness and joy. I was feeling so good. It, it just like poured out of my head. And for no reason at all, I started to laugh. And I'm <laughs> listening to myself laughing for no reason at all. And I, I'm looking around to see, is there anybody looking? <laughs> but I just That's poured great. out of me. Yeah. <laughs> I think if anybody was looking, they would just want to join right in. They probably would, but I was feeling embarrassed about it. <laughs> like, oh, you Pages, Where, where's the men in the white coats? They're going to come take me away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's like um, they have a whole practice. of. We were talking yesterday, one of the things on the happiness hacking chart was yoga, and there is such a thing as laughing yoga. Yes. Yes, I've heard of that. I, I, I'm not quite sure how it works. Do, have you done it? Do you know how it works? I haven't done it, but I've seen it, and it's, you know, it's really funny. It's kind of like, I haven't seen an actual class of it, but I've seen little clips. I mean, it's really just laughing, mm -hmm. um, the things that I've seen anyway. And it's interesting because it's like forced at first. Um, and it's like the people that are doing it will just start forcing a laugh, just, <laughs> you know, it's not even real. Um, and so there's a group of people, and they start laughing, it's like fake laughing, and you just keep going with it. And at some point, it just turns into a real solid belly laugh. Mm -hmm. And then it's like no one can stop because ah. it's just, you know. Um, and, it, hey, there's that whole laughter is the best medicine thing, right? So oh, it is. Yes. It's got to be. That's at the top of the scale. We're back at the top of the scale again. The, the whole thing about laughter, you're right, it, it, it's the best medicine. Science has actually proven how laughter physically affects the body. Um, they can now trace, you know, with the various medical tools they have these days, they can trace from the point in your mind where you find something funny and then you start to laugh. They can detect what happens with, like, the endocrine system and so forth. And it kicks off a series of signals that go through your nervous system and through the endocrine system to other parts of the body and basically sends out, when the, the laughter sends out a signal to parts of your body that are in most need of healing start healing and then various healing modalities start kicking in into that part of the body so if you if you have like a disease or something like that and maybe there's a concentration of i don't know bacteria or whatever it is it starts attacking the bacteria in, in a vociferous way it's really just going at it aggressively whereas if you're feeling sad and you're feeling anger and you're feeling depression and so forth, it produces exactly the opposite. It produces the cortisol with the stress-related stuff and so forth. And so it basically sends signals to that same part of the body, start dying, start dying right now. It's amazing how the, the, wow. the expression of the emotions that are, I mean, not that you should keep the, the negative emotions in, you want to get them out so you can get them out permanently, but the expression particularly of positive emotions sends tremendous amounts of healing directly to parts of the body that need to heal. Yeah, years ago, my dad was diagnosed with cancer, um, and he's no longer uh, with us. May he rest in peace. But the cancer is not what took his life. Um, the cancer he actually recovered from, and it, he had stage 4 cancer in his lungs, his brain, his bones, his liver, and he actually completely recovered from it. And... One of the things we did when we found out is that we put everybody on notice um, that we were going to bombard him with things that would make him laugh. <laughs> and we watched funny movies with him. We sent him jokes. We called him up and told him jokes. It was like we are going to keep him laughing as much as possible. And that wasn't the entirety of his treatment, of course. Sure. But I know that it had an effect. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt. And that I didn't effect. know what you just uh, spoke about right now. Uh, so that's when you were talking about that. That's all I was thinking about was, wow, that's what we did for Dad. And um, amazing. By the way, this whole thing that you talked about with um, laughter yoga, you, it, for people who are interested in exploring that, there are meetup groups, you know, meetup.com. There are meetup groups in areas all around the country 
I don't remember exactly what they call themselves, but they get together for that purpose, for doing the, the laughter as a group kind of a thing. And it also occurred to me that that's what comedians do. A good comedian doing stand-up comedy is trying to hit you with one thing to laugh at after another to try to get that laughter thing rolling. Because once the yeah. comedian gets it rolling, it, it doesn't matter what he says. thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, if you walk in on a, a comedy routine halfway through the routine and everybody is, is laughing, you can actually hear what the comedian is saying and you say, well, that's not funny. Why are they all laughing? It's because he got them laughing earlier. So anything he says sounds funny after a while. Right, right. And you think about times that you're with a group of people and there is a lot of laughter. Um, it is contagious. And we do kind of start just giggling and laughing at everything because I think it's because we're at the top of that emotional scale all of a sudden, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Joy we've helped, and... <laughs> we've helped each other get laughter. there. We've pushed each other there by all laughing together. Right. Right. It's great. I it's love a, it. And I nice. love knowing that it's so good for our bodies to laugh. It's nice to know we can uh, do it, too. It's nice that as a group, you know, we can make each other laugh and stay there. Yeah, that's 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 cool. It is. And are these groups that you're talking about, are they yoga groups or just laughter groups? Well, meetup.com, if, if you've never used Meetup, then it's, it's going to be a little hard to explain. But meetup.com is basically a kind of like a social media site in a sense in that it's a place where people can go and you can look up anything that you want to meet other people to do. So if okay. let's say if you're single and you want to meet other singles, there are single meetup groups. If you are into bowling, there are bowling meetup groups. If you are into hiking, there are hiking meetup groups. If any activity, any hobby, any sport that you can think of, there are groups for. And one of the kinds of groups you can find are people who get together just to laugh, which sounds bizarre, I know, but <laughs> it really is there, and you can find them all over the country. That'd be really funny, you know, um to do a, a do a scientific study right of the laughing meetup groups and, and their level of health. <laughs> yeah, right. There are also law of attraction meetup groups. In fact, my awesome. wife and I tried to start one at one point. We didn't get real far, although we, we we got a few people who showed up. We didn't call it a law of attraction. We called it a, a get happy group, but it was about to do the same thing really. Um, but there are there are lots of them. There, I mean, any topic you can think of, any interest you can think of, there are meetup meet groups, and you can find them at meetup.com. So meetups are great, laughter is great, but have we made it to the top of the scale yet? Yeah, the top of the scale is joy. Joy, thought... appreciation, and you know, this is, this is interesting too because I think this is why grat a gratitude practice is so important. We know, we know from some recent studies that just the act of looking for something to feel grateful for starts the process of chemicals, brain chemicals that feel better, that cause us to feel better, right. feel happier. Yep. Um, and so it's just the, the process of looking. We don't have to even find anything before that starts. It kicks in right away. Uh, it always reminds me of, it's funny, processes that start automatically. You know, when you smell bacon cooking, your body automatically starts to produce the enzyme that you need, the specific enzyme that you need to process bacon, <laughs> to digest <laughs> bacon. It's like, our bodies are smart. And so just looking for something to feel grateful for starts that process. And if we look at the scale the top of the scale is appreciation. These five things are listed at the top of the scale. Joy, appreciation, empower, it says empowered, so empowerment, freedom, and love. So we're automatically taking ourselves to the top of the scale by appreciating things. That's really interesting. The fact that you were saying that when you when you're just trying to reach for gratitude, reach for appreciation before you've even found it, you're already getting the benefit of it. And I'm thinking, right. I'm thinking back to the first few times I was trying to do it deliberately, trying to feel gratitude and appreciation. And I remember struggling with it, struggling to find stuff. And I remember doubting that it was going to work. And I'm wondering, was I also feeling the impact of reaching for it anyway? And that was helping to overcome the doubt. 
And I don't know what the answer is, but that's what went through my mind when you said that. Mm-hmm. Interesting, yeah. Um, also, yesterday or the day before, it was when we did the – it was on the 20 happy happiness hacking tips, but I can't remember which number it was. <laughs> uh, but it talked about feeling emotions, mm-hmm. which we've talked mm-hmm. about a lot. But it, it specifically mentioned feeling – conflicting emotions at the same time and that that was actually a healthy thing to be able to do um and i can't i can't remember right now the um i remember that it was there yeah and, and right? i do remember the example wondering was like about it too. i'm i feel bad that my pet has died but but i am really happy about this new job promotion or something like that yeah so i'm thinking when you're telling that story about gratitude and putting it into practice and that you had doubt going on that it was going to work. It's like there were two things happening at once. I think there is one difference, though. In the example I gave, I was feeling uh, uh, kind of conflicting emotions about the same thing, whereas the example you described there was mm, uh, conflicting emotions things. but two different things. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think, strictly speaking, you really can't feel more than one thing about a particular situation at any one time, but you can vacillate. You can go to one, go to the other, go to one, go to the other. Sort of like emotional multitasking. <laughs> right, and I think you can vacillate pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, you can. Right? You can, yeah. So, so I like the idea that, you know, just looking at the, the words and seeing appreciation up there at the top and recognizing, wow, so when we, when we specifically, um, I mean, I have a gratitude practice that's actually scheduled because I run – Really? Um, I run a group, and on Wednesday, that's one of the prompts that I give the group, right, is like to find some evidence of things going on in your life. Um, I, and I have four categories that I always share that I like to find evidence of abundance, evidence of health, evidence of love, and evidence of magic. And I find that evidence. That's my gratitude practice. So it's very cool to think, hey, just doing that practice automatically puts us at the top of the scale. Okay, I'm I'm going to make notes here because I like those. So there's evidence of abundance. Abundance, health, love, and magic. That kind of covers everything for me. Okay. Health, love. I want to make sure I don't forget these. And magic. And how does that tie in to appreciation? How do you how do you tie it together? Well, it's a gratitude practice, so we're looking for things that we appreciate, and I like to find things in those categories. So it's it's an evidence practice. It's like, well, you know, my my other half's an attorney, so <laughs> <laughs> here's what I know: is that the more evidence you have, the more evidence that you can collect. Sure. The stronger your case is, right? Right, right. And so if you have a huge amount of evidence, you can be like, yeah, I'm pretty convinced of this because look at all the evidence. And so I've always said, let's collect the evidence of uh, for a gratitude practice. I used to give my clients um, a notebook and say, this is your book of evidence. I want you to write down the good things that you're finding in your life, the things that are working well the things that you can smile about and appreciate. So that's my that's the way I do a gratitude practice. That's interesting. So Wednesdays are gratitude days and you focus on four different areas to be grateful about by finding specific examples of them so that they become your evidence and evidence of abundance, evidence of health, evidence of love, and evidence of magic. What's magic for you? What does that mean? Well, I believe that magic is any successful action that brings something from the metaphysical realm of hopes, dreams, wishes, thoughts, ideas, right? Like when you have an idea for something, it's still in the metaphysical realm. You can't touch it. It's just a thought. It's just an idea. It's kind of nebulous. And when we take action, and it might be a gratitude practice, maybe that's the action, Mm -hmm. right? Um, 
It can be a, a magical action, like I'm going to meditate or do a ritual or whatever, and it can be a mundane action, like I'm going to send this job resume in or I'm going to give Walt a call and see if he likes the idea of doing a podcast about you know this particular topic or whatever mm-hmm. it is. Okay. It's an action that you're taking to bring that thing from the space of the metaphysical realm down into manifested you know, physical realm. That's good. To that, me, that's, that's magic. That, that's it's not what magic. I thought it was going to be, but that's good. I like that. What, what I thought it was going to be was um, appreciating life's serendipities. The, the, well, synchronicity is a big part of it. Um, you know, that's, that's what happened to this morning when I, when I had an idea in my head that, wait, I wonder if peace is on the emotional scale, and I do a Google search for emotional scale, and the very first search that comes up has peace in the title. And peace isn't even in the emotional scale. Um, I call that magic because I think that's, I think that magic is the successful action that brings something from the metaphysical into the physical, but always has a hallmark um, of surprise and delight. I also have an appreciation for how Google works. I, I'm, I'm a student of it. I have, for the longest time, wanted to understand you know, the inner workings. I, I followed all that kind of thing. And so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable at how they put the whole thing together. And given what I know about it, I know that, uh, for instance, Google will tend to provide search results based on what it thinks you may be looking for that you didn't mention in your search. Based yes, in part on what I'm you've done previously. I'm a big Google fan as well. Okay, so you understand how that process works. But sometimes, sometimes some of the stuff that it comes up with is truly remarkable because you really can't remember where you ever searched on that, and yet somehow it knew to bring it into the search result that it showed you. And that's what that sounded like to me, the example you gave, where all of a sudden it, it introduced the concept of peace in there. So unless you've been doing some searching on peace, that sounds pretty serendipitous for Google, and that's where I wonder if Google might <laughs> yeah, have a little magic going so on. So that's why I was like, oh, and I, I do have a lovely little Google assistant that sits over here, but she was not involved in this search either. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny, though. Yeah, the, this this is a good idea. I like the idea of searching for evidence of those four things to look for. And and doing that on a regular basis, I'm going to try to find a way to incorporate that into my daily practice. Because right now I do like uh, daily affirmations. I, I there's a um, an Abraham Hicks rampage that goes on for about nine minutes of all these wonderful affirmations about uh, life and and you know the Abraham approach to understanding life and so forth. So I use that. And uh, there are the uh, the four tapes that they put out, uh, the meditation tapes. I use those, and I have my own med my own stuff that I've written out over the years. But uh, I'm going to find a way to incorporate that. That's that's good stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I do like it. That's really good. I, I had never really thought about it doing it that way. You made it a very nice little package. Before <laughs> we leave, I want to remind everybody, first of all, if you have not yet subscribed to the podcast, please do so because that's how we're getting more and more people involved in listening to more and more episodes and even occasionally people listening to the live broadcast, which we really love. Um, the way you subscribe is by going to LOAToday.net. There's a whole bunch of buttons all over the place for subscribing. You can't miss it. Trust me, doesn't matter what device you're on, you'll find them. <laughs> I've got them all over the place on the page. You can also do it through your iPhone by going to either the iTunes store or just to your podcast software. It'll find it either way. Just type in LOAToday.net. Or actually, all you have to do is type LOA today. You don't even have to put the .net in for that. Same thing with Google Play. You can find it there. So lots of ways to do it. And please do continue to like us on the social media. And uh, Cindy, if they want to find you, if they're interested more in your coaching service for some uh, private uh, consultation, how do they reach you? Uh, they can find me on the web at cindychavez.com, C-I-N-D-I-E-C-H-A-V-E-Z.com. That's where I am. That's really a good thing to do, too. If you, it, Sometimes you just need to have that personal attention that goes beyond what uh, a daily dose of happy on the radio can do for you. <laughs> Thank you. And so let's see. we got to figure out what our next topic is going to be tomorrow. we got uh, 24 hours. Well, actually, you join me next Tuesday, so that's the next time. But i got to figure it out with Tom Wells tomorrow what my topic is going to be. So think of some good topics and pass them along. And in the meantime, we invite you to join us both later on today at 4 with Wendy Dillard and tomorrow morning here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. 